What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogashan, aka The Seattle Data Guy. And according to your votes, the next thing you guys really want to see is cracking the Fang interview. Again, at least according to this last comment, and clearly this comment has come up twice, so let's dig into cracking the Fang interview. Now, I'm going to break this into three different videos. First, talking about preparation. Second, talking a little bit more about the interview itself. And third, talking about post-interview stuff like negotiations. So for this video, we're going to focus on how you should prepare for a FANG interview. And it can be difficult to prepare for a FANG interview because there are just so many subjects that you need to cover, depending on the role that you're going to be taking, whether it be software engineer, data scientist, or data engineer. There's just a myriad of skills that we're required to know, everything from database design, statistics, system design, programming, data structures and algorithms, and really just a whole host of other questions. And so where do you even begin to get ready? So let's start out with this quick list of things that you should probably do in order to prepare yourself for a technical interview at a large fan company or just a general tech company like Uber or Lyft. So here are the five things I recommend you do in order to prepare for your FANG interview. First, figure out what you need to study depending on the company that you're studying for. Here's the thing, whether you're studying for Amazon or Facebook or Netflix, all of these companies will ask different questions. Amazon, for example, from my experience, focus more on database design and SQL more than they focus on anything like coding like. Whereas Facebook focused on a little bit of everything from product sense questions, SQL, Python, and database design. So it all just really depends on the company that you're going for. And so step one is to figure out what you need to actually study for. And that usually requires you to ask your recruiters what you should expect. Once you have a general idea of what to study, then you need to create a plan. Now I have an example of the plan that I use personally uh, here and it'll be linked below so you can see a picture of it. It's just basically a Google sheet that broke down different sections of things that you need to study. And I've one for data scientists as well as software engineer and data engineer. And it just kind of broke down the different key sections that you need to study. Now, some of you are just interested in the resources that I use to study for my FANG interviews. And if you're interested in that, you can look below for the section that says resources I use to study for my interviews and just skip to that section. That's where I'll be going over direct videos, leak code questions, and very specific resources that I use to prepare for my interviews. But first I wanna continue over this high level preparation steps. Once you have the resources ready, I recommend you do some sort of pre-interview for yourself, some sort of pre-test just to see where you're at where your weaknesses are, you know, where are you really slow at answering questions? Do you need to work on data structures and algorithms? Or do you need to work more in design? And that will just give you some bearing overall on what you need to focus on. Fourth thing, as you're going through the different sections of your study plan, make sure you note down where you need to focus more heavily on. So there was the pretest that kind of gives you focus initially, but as you're kind of doing interviews and as you're going through the sections more seriously, you're gonna know sections that you're really weak on and just note those down because taking notes kind of lets you know in the future what you've done, what you still need to do and helps you track things better. Otherwise, you're going to end up in the end not being as optimal with your time because you're going to study things that maybe weren't the best thing for you to focus on just because maybe you felt like it or you weren't really sure where you should focus. So keeping notes and keeping track of where you're at will just help you focus in the long run. Fifth, run mock interviews. Have someone that you know or maybe some counselor run mock interviews with you because you need to get used to answering questions where you don't have a computer in front of you to just Google the answer where you kind of have to spend some time thinking and feel like you can't just grasp or search something or Google something easily, where you have to actually look into your brain. Cause I think many of us are so accustomed to just Googling answers. It can almost be hard to find the answer in our brain because our brain just wants to Google things naturally, but you're not going to have a computer to search up answers next to you. So you need to be able to answer the question from your brain and not from the computer. And now for the next few minutes, I'm going to focus on digging into these five points and giving further pointers into cracking the FANG interview, because this was more of a high level table of context. And now I really want to focus in on the resources that I used, kind of focusing in very heavily on how you should run yourself a pretest, you know, create yourself a pretest and go forward with that, how you should run mock interviews and other things about preparation that are really important for you to do. So let's go over that in my room. Once you know what you need to study for, for your data engineering or data science interviews, now you can start looking for resources that exist online, both free and paid that you can work with to prepare for your tech interviews. And honestly, there are tons of resources that you have out there at your disposal for everything from system design to coding questions to SQL questions. Honestly, there are so many channels out there as well as Udemy courses and paid subscription services that you can use that all generally work pretty well for preparing you for your interview. But let's look at a few that I use that I really enjoyed that again, range from coding to SQL to system design. So for coding, I honestly started with HackerRank. That was like the first place that I found 
any form of interview questions while I was in school and, and taking my first few coding courses. And honestly, I started doing those before I even realized what technical interviews were like. Like I was just doing these problems because I thought they were fun. I thought they were interesting to solve. And I honestly didn't even connect them to interview questions till like a year later. So hacker rank was where I first started and then eventually found leak code. And then from there started finding tons of videos on YouTube. In particular, the channels that I really enjoy, one is CS Dojo. You can see a video of the guy up here. He really has very unique videos. He does a great job breaking down questions as well as concepts that you'll need to understand if you're doing coding questions. And I've always really enjoyed his explanation and style. And so I think that's a great resource. And in my guide that is linked below, you'll actually probably find a video or two from CS Dojo because again, really enjoyed his videos. Nick White is another YouTube creator that puts out great content around the same concepts and questions. You know, he's focusing on how to break down interview questions, which will just give you those techniques that you need to break down other interview questions. Because at the end of the day, more than likely the questions you get won't be one that you've seen before. And so you're going to need to actually take the techniques that you learn from these videos and not the actual questions themselves. Also, I'm not an affiliate of this program, but I'll go expert if you need more of a paid service, because that's just something you mentally need in terms of keeping you on track is also an option where they'll kind of do similar things as CS Dojo and some of these other channels where they'll break down questions and maybe they'll do some tests for you. So it's a little more structured than just watching random YouTube videos. And so that can be a little more helpful for people who need that structure and also need that incentive of the fact that they're paying a monthly subscription fee to encourage them to keep paying for a service. So that's, if you need it, that's there as well. Honestly, when I first started, they didn't have those kind of services. It was just all kind of leak code and hacker rank. And then I think a lot of these services just copy the questions from these different sites and then explain them out. And that's kind of how they created a product, which, you know, I guess that's one way you can create a product. And if it creates value for people, then I can't complain. Next, I personally focused on system design and you can use the classic rocking the system design interview. That's one great kind of resource that I've used in the past. But also there are tons of great videos that I really do enjoy in terms of creators that just clearly have a passion for creating systems. And you can learn a lot because you really get that hands-on experience in terms of them kind of walking through the different design choices that they're making as they're building different systems. For example, Success in Tech has this video on how you could develop or design kind of Twitter or some portions of Twitter. I really like their explanation in terms of how they kind of broke it down, how they treated the whole whiteboarding. It was really fun to watch. I remember watching it back like four years ago and I still find it now. And it's still one of those videos that comes up pretty quickly on YouTube, which I think is a testament to how useful it's become for people. And they actually have plenty of other videos besides this one that are really meant to help you practice for your system design interview questions. And again, they just do a great job of helping you understand the different components, helping you understand why you would make certain decisions along the way, and also trying to ask you yourself and pose questions to you in terms of why are you making these decisions? You know, why are you picking these different tools, these different components, you know, and that's very important because this is something that you will get asked in an interview because you can't just create the perfect design. You know, if you do create the perfect design right off the bat, likely the interviewer will either one, be skeptical if you had the answer to begin with, or two, then have a follow-up question just to make sure that you really understand the choices you're making. So you need to do more than just have this perfect design in your brain because you've either copy pasted it from watching one of these videos into your brain, or just because you happen to find it because of dumb luck. Either or, you need to know why you're making those decisions and these videos help you do that. The other video creator that I really enjoyed when I was doing it, and I think it's because of his enthusiasm, was Guar Sen. Again, he was just super enthusiastic when he made these videos. So it's like hard to not get excited about system design when you're watching someone that's really into it. Also, similar thing, lots of whiteboarding, lots of explanation, lots of helping you understand the decisions that you're going to have to make in an interview. So check him out as well. So next, now this section is probably more relevant for data engineers and data scientists, which is SQL interview rounds because software engineers, I don't think get asked too often about SQL. Generally your SQL is very CRUD based. So insert, update, delete, whereas data engineers and data scientists have a lot of complex metrics we have to create. And this is where we do a lot of our business logic, whereas software engineers tend to do a lot of their logic in the code. We do a lot of our logic in SQL. And so this is very important if you're a data engineer or data scientist. I already brought up that both Facebook and Amazon have pretty heavy SQL sections for data engineers and similar thing can be said for Facebook and data scientists. So you do need to have your SQL on point. In particular, there are again, lots of different resources. Uh, I use hacker rank and leak code at first when I first started this, but then again, somehow I'm old now and there are so many other services that exist. For example, Nate at Strata, which you can find his YouTube channel below creates tons of videos focused on interview questions that all have to do with SQL. It's great for people that are data scientists or even data engineers, because you can kind of get ready for SQL questions that are likely going to exist 
in your live interviews. He even has examples of like Amazon, Microsoft, and very specific courses and very specific companies and the questions that they're likely to ask. And I'm gonna guess he's either scoured the web on Glassdoor or maybe he's asked some people who work at these companies for what questions they were asked when they went through their interviews. So it's a very valuable resource because you'll learn a ton in terms of both context and real SQL questions, as well as understanding why you're making these decisions. Now, those are probably the core areas that data scientists, software engineers, and data engineers all have in similarity. There are some more specifics that I include in my study guides. Like for example, data scientists are likely to need some sort of statistics section. Data engineers are likely to have some sort of data warehouse design section. Software engineers are probably way more focused on data structures and algorithms than either of these two roles. So it's very important that you understand what role you're going for and what the focus areas are, but everyone can benefit from SQL coding and system design. Except for data scientists, you might not benefit from system design at all. Now, there is one more section that almost every role, especially at FANGS, need to go through in terms of a round of interviews, which is generally some sort of ownership or behavioral question round. How you practice for this usually depends on the company. All companies have different leadership principles or core values that you should look up online because generally these ownership interviews or behavioral interviews are focused around those concepts because again, these are key things that the company is very interested in seeing. Do you care about? Do you understand these things? Did you spend time looking up our core values or leadership principles so you can have some stories ready to go to talk about things like your impact or your ownership of a project or how you handle conflict or drive ideas. All of these things are very important, especially at big tech, where honestly, something I found out is generally they're not so interested in getting an extra pair of hands, someone who can just code, especially. They're interested in finding people that find new business ideas and business opportunities. Whether you're a data engineer, software engineer, or data scientist, they want you to start driving those decisions. So they want to see that you are willing to own ideas. They want you to have the ability to drive ideas. I think Amazon always has that concept of like, you need to be right and often be right. You need to be able to like drive a point home with data, things like that, which are very important to them. And so it's important that you have stories pre-ready to talk about that fit into those categories. Just have three or four stories ready in your brain of things that you've done in the past at projects that you've worked on. Think about a few numbers that you've probably driven, you know, million dollar savings, 30% efficiencies, things like that. Be ready to talk about those. And then from there, you might have to cookie cutter them to the specific question that you get asked because it's hard to know what question you'll be asked. But as long as you have those three or four stories already read in your brain, it'll be easier than having to think on the spot, how in the world was I able to handle conflict in this one case or situation? Wow, that was a ton of information that I just covered. And that's one of the problems you're gonna run into. There are just too many resources to prepare for an interview. You need to take a moment and actually make a plan. Now I've used this example multiple times and I just created a study plan in a Google sheet that's honestly super simple. It just has the questions linked, a little section for notes, something that references, you know, how much time did it take you to actually answer these questions? And then some video content and some other things to help study and improve your understanding about different concepts. And that's really all I'd recommend you do. Again, you can either use the links that I have or create your own study guide, but that'll just help you keep track of what you're doing. Rather than you constantly like looking up videos and just randomly going down rabbit holes, it provides more of an optimal route in terms of you focusing on studying the right things rather than just randomly studying one question after another and not really having any purpose or meaning behind the steps that you're taking. The second benefit creating a study plan has for you is you can do something that I did, which was run a pretest on yourself. So get a few SQL questions, get a few system design questions, get a few coding questions, statistics questions, whatever is gonna be in your interview and just run a quick pre-test for yourself and note where you're really weak. Wherever that is, that's where you're gonna be focusing on. Again, you need to create a plan of attack because you only have so much time to study. You don't wanna be wasting it, studying something you're already good at or something that you're pretty confident in. You wanna know exactly where your weak points are and what you need to study because that will just make you more effective. Also, like I mentioned earlier, do keep notes both about how you're progressing over time, as well as how you're progressing in your actual interviews. You know, you should try to get in as many interviews as possible because you're gonna see even more so where your weak points are. It's just a different beast when you're sitting at home at your desk or even on a whiteboard or writing some stuff on a piece of paper versus having someone ask you a question that you've never heard before and you have limited time and all of these different restraints. It just becomes so much more stressful and getting more comfortable with that situation will prepare you even more so for every next interview. Most of us don't get the job on the first interview. I interview at some companies multiple times before I got offers and it's okay to fail one interview here and there. I still get emails from some companies where I initially failed some of their first or second interviews that I had with them, but eventually started getting a little more successful in their rounds. Because at the end of the day, interviewing sadly is a skill that you just need to practice in its own right. And yes, we can all complain about the fact that interviews are kind of silly, but currently it is the way that many of these companies operate. So 
especially if you're still new to the industry, you're going to have to play that game until you get enough experience or fall into some sort of like engineering manager role where maybe you get shifted a little bit away from those questions. But even then, a lot of these companies will still ask you some form of technical questions, even if you're an engineering manager. Finally, do run mock interviews. They're super helpful. I've had friends in my past who were just really good at running mock interviews. So we would just do that after class or maybe late at night in our school's libraries while we were getting ready for our first rounds of interviews. Because again, it just becomes steps of how do I actually prepare for an interview? How do I you know, outline a question? What are the different questions I need to ask my interviewer to ensure that I have the right way forward? You know, I have all the details required to actually answer the question. And again, how do I operate when I can't just Google the answer? Because again, that seems like such a small thing, but you realize how much you rely on Google, especially as programmers, right? Like it's our first thing to go to Stack Overflow or wherever we need to for something very simple that in theory, maybe we should know in our heads, but who actually remembers how to reformat a date every time? So do just get accustomed to solving questions without having any computer attached to yourself whatsoever. Because again, it's just so easy to have that mental crutch in your brain. We all do it and it's totally okay. It's just important to remember. Now, speaking of things that I always forget, if you're enjoying these videos and finding this content helpful, please take a moment, like, subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about preparing for interviews, cracking the Fang interview or something similar, leave the comments below. You know, either me or someone else in the community will likely answer and we'll all try to help you get that first job because we all remember how difficult it is to just crack that interview. Coding interviews are stressful, so we all understand and we've all been there. So leave a comment below, ask a question, and I will do my best to answer it. One final tip for y'all about preparing for your interview. Again, this is gonna be three different series. So next after this will be how to actually operate in the interview. But as you're kind of going through this, I recommend you actually do different layers of how you try to answer questions. What I mean by that is one, practice on paper. Writing questions out on paper just, I think, creates different forms of memory connections, at least for me. I personally feel like I just remember things in a different way if I practice writing it all on paper. And again, it removes you from that computer. Two, try out a whiteboard because that's also its own beast. You know, practice on a whiteboard if you have one. If you can do one at your school, do that. Again, I just think it brings a different form of memory to you. You get accustomed to writing on a whiteboard. You kind of get accustomed to spacing on a whiteboard. I think that was a problem I always ran into was like, I'd be writing on a whiteboard and run out of space. And again, any little extra stress that you add to yourself in an interview just makes it that much worse. So just practice writing out on a whiteboard so you kind of get general idea of space. And three, do practice on an IDE because there are plenty of interviews these days that do have you run on CoderPad or they give you just a hacker rank link or something like that. So just get accustomed to doing that as well. I think having those different layers just gets you more comfortable with whatever style interview you're gonna get because again, interviewing is just a skill in itself. It's difficult, none of us completely like it, I honestly hope I never have to interview again. I probably still will. And I'll probably follow these exact same steps that I took the next time I plan on interviewing, just because again, you need that refresher. Even if you've worked in software for the last five years, we just tend to forget those very basic concepts because sadly the work that we do is often not reflected of the interview questions we're asked. And that's just the way the world is for now. All that being said, thank you so much for your attention in this video. I really do wish you the best of luck as you're cracking the Fang interviews or whatever tech company you're going out there for. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you next time. Bye.